If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this sexy episode. Ooh, girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey there. <laughs> I love it when Adam sings. His <laughs> You're always going through puberty good. with your voice. Uh, in the, the first 53 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We talk about... BPC-157. Oh, BPC-157. That is not a droid. Zerg. That is a peptide that Adam is experimenting with. Uh, hopefully, he grows a new Achilles yep. from it. Yeah. We talk about high-dose turmeric and its effect on inflammation. That's another Sal's thing. trying to hustle that or it's working. stuff. It's working. Look, we are sponsored <laughs> by- like, This bottle only lasted me a week, bro. Dude, Shit, we got to move get, product. <laughs> they, they also got great protein powders, plant-based. Uh, we are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump, you will get to the private mind pump page that they made for us. Enter the code mind pump. You'll get 20% off any products. We talked about higher carb and higher protein protocol because uh, we're kind of trying to gain a little bit. Um, here in the, at the studio. We talk about the convenience of Butcher Box. Butcher Box delivers to your door grass fed, high quality meats. And bring us home the beef. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you're going to get free bacon for life. I bring home the bacon for life. Ugh. And you'll get $10 off your first order and you'll get free shipping. Then we talk about Justin's weekend at the circus. Yeah, do, 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 do. good time. Yeah, he also got massaged this weekend. Deep tissue nude massage <laughs> by another man. By a man, uh, he was a little uncomfortable. Questioned yes. things for a second. Very uncomfortable. We talked to him mostly because he it. liked it so much. Yep, yep. It was I think really it was good. the armpit thing. I was yep. not okay with that. Made him curious. Uh, we talked about the free car scam and other slimy sales tactics. Mm. We talked about the dangers of tattoos. Uh oh. Cry closets and the pluses and minuses of technology on the youth, and the long term effects of mixing safe chemicals. Quote unquote. Then we get into the questions. The first question was this person is doing MAPS performance, getting pain in one of their shoulders with overhead pressing. They also have forward shoulders. What can they do to fix it? We talk about how to fix forward shoulders in this part of the episode. MAPS Prime. There the, you go. The next question was uh, what are our thoughts on youth? Weight training, like when is it too young to lift weights and will they stunt their growth? Next question was, uh, how do you balance intuitive eating when you're trying to build maximum muscle? You don't. Mm. Next question was, uh, we went easy on this one. We wanted to make sure we did a little fun one. What's the meaning of life? Like, why are we here? <laughs> easy question. Yeah, because we know the answer to that. Yeah. And uh, we talked about uh, maps anywhere on sale, didn't we? 50% mm. off? Yes. So I'm going to do that one again. I did that at the end <laughs> double, of the episode. We'll double, double that it up. up. Double commercial. Maps Anywhere is 50% off all June. That means you have four days left. Go to mindpumpmedia.com, get Maps Anywhere, or look at our bundles, which are multiple Maps programs put together and discounted like 30% off. T-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Oh, hell oh, good. yes. Good. T-shirt time. Hit us with that T-shirt. 33 reviews. Whoa, because Sal told people how to exactly. You, you got to tell them how to do it. Wow. And nine shirts are going out. So the winners are Chelsea McLean, McKinley Slade, The Ra Rad Adman, Latgo, Mike Yato, Chapstick is Better Than Lip Gloss, <laughs> I Cinder concur. Momo. I concur. <laughs> Mini Chica. And Tristan Given, all of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Man, I like this group. Dude, you look fucking jacked right now. You know what? What? That's weird you say that. Why? Well, I, I was going to say the same thing about weird. myself. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say that. Thank you for taking my thunder. Uh, bro, I've been, uh, I've been fucking feeling it. I think my testosterone levels are getting really high again. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, you know what's great? You, know what? you find yourself masturbating to weird things. Way more, no, way weird. more often. So I did blood work, and I was like a hundred over average. Over average with the blood work. Yeah. Was it free testosterone or total? Free. It was free. Yeah. Wait, you saying you wouldn't had another test? Yeah. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was doing it anyway. Whoa, because of uh, I was trying to like see what the hell's going on because I was so tired all the time. What was the number that you had? <sighs> I don't remember. Wrong, it was like a four hundred something. Out of I don't know what the whatever their scale is. Yeah, their scale. That's which is different. 
Yeah, but 400 is still kind of low. It's not high. Yeah. Or it's, not, it's not low. Low is like, uh, so on that scale. He's also said you brush your teeth before yeah, doing the I fucked well. up on the test. I want to do that test again is what I'm saying. You want to rematch? Yeah, I want to rematch. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm getting at. Well, I'm, I tell you what, dude. My, my gut health is good. The protocol of the long fast has done such wonders on healing, be, being able to allow me to assimilate more food. Then I'm following MAP split, so I've got that combination. Because my gut health's be- better, I'm able to eat more starches and carbs, which we all know you're going to perform a little bit better when you lift, when you do that. And so I'm just feeling like my old self. Well, my, I- my girl yesterday, she's like, are you on anything that you're not yeah. telling me? Oh, wow. Which is like yeah. the old Carbs. Ultimate, what a great compliment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, no. This is natural. So I didn't tell you guys either that I just uh, got my BP-157. Oh, you're doing that? You're doing the yeah. BP-157? What is that? Yeah, is this some it's kind a, of droid? It's a peptide. <laughs> it's oh, okay. a droid. Yeah, Ben Greenfield actually did a, a really good write-up on it. So so would you get the powder and you got to mix it with the water? Yeah, it looks just like when you have uh, HGH. Yeah, or is it injectable? Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, you use This uh, is a peptide for... We should probably tell the audience. No, so we I don't think, recommend that. It's like gray, well, gray market? Or? No, let's, yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's actually fine right now. It's legal right now. You can order it, but it's... Uh, it, it, there's rumors that it will become illegal, right? Or that it'll be for um, what you call it only. So it causes brain cancer in like stupid thirty percent of it. No. <laughs> ben Greenfield did a great write up on it. So the people that are wondering more on it, it's uh, for recovery though. So there it is, right there. Thank you, Doug. We can put it in the show notes. Jack, you can just plug our boy. <clears throat> BP fact, he, if you actually Google BP one fifty seven, BPC. Ben, what did I say? BPC. BP. B- BPC. Yeah, yeah BPC. Because BP157 is a different. That compound is for penis growth. This one oh, right yeah. here is for yeah, actually, tissue regeneration. Yeah, actually, scroll down just a little bit. B- I hope you got the right one because uh, no. you don't want to go bigger. You don't want to. I had, we know it's what, too much. You're, not, you're already on the edge. Right. No, I had, I, had a, I had a doctor friend set us up, so we're all good. What's the acronym stand for again? I don't think it stands for anything. No, I think it does. That's just the no, chemi- no, oh, no, it does? Yeah, it does. It's, and it, scroll down a little bit to tell you what it, what it stands for. Body go. protecting compound. There you go. They made oh, that up. Body yeah. protecting <laughs> they made, compound. They made that up. Yeah. It's Ben. It's Ben. <laughs> it's fucking Ben making stuff. I no, think they just what... named it that because it's a it's a <clears throat> it's a peptide. And then someone's like, "What can we make BPC stand for?" Yeah, I know. Body protecting compound. Uh, so this stuff is supposed to accelerate healing of tissues, right? Yes. And it's you inject at the site you want. Yeah, so that was my so my first little struggle. I did it yesterday. Um, oh shit, you did it already? Yeah, yeah. For your ankle? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you fr- put it right in the Achilles? So, yeah, I did. Ooh. But you, it actually, what was uh about it was all the scar tissue that I had in there. So like, I bent the needle and it was kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna have to. Are like, you going down here, up here near the muscle? I, I, I the first one I did kind of like this mid, right mm-hmm. in this like middle of my Achilles, right. Um, but that's all. I've got a lot of scar tissue around there. So, Are you, did you notice that? What's well, only one day? Yeah, it's only one day, so I don't notice. I don't notice anything yet. But I'm, you know, the idea is to take it every other day, right? So I'm taking it every other day, um, and I started it yesterday. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see. I mean, talking to one of our buddies, and he was just like, "Dude, <clears throat> now these are compounds that aren't approved yet by the FDA. They're in study currently. It's a research chemical, which is why you can buy it. So if you kind of do something like this, you got to really do your. I mean, do your research because this is you're, you're kind of. You know, you're 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 putting it in your own hands, right? right? You know, this is something I was I was completely unaware of this. Like, this is not, and I always talk about like SARMs and peptides and things like that. That I'm just I don't know enough about it, so I avoid them at all costs. But two of our really good uh, friends that are, you know, one of them's a doctor and the other one's brilliant, have recommended this, including Ben Greenfield. I'm not even including Ben Greenfield. Ben has also recommended this to me. And so upon that, I've gone through and read read all my own stuff on it, and it seems pretty safe. Seems like something that hmm. if, I, if I'm going to dabble in this, I feel doesn't it come from gastric juice of like they find it in the gastric juices of like rats or animals or something? Yeah. Like that? So there's the actual comp, right? You, you're looking at the exact compound right there up on the on the television screen, and all all it really is is a bunch of uh, amino acids. You know, just a sequence of amino acids. Yeah. So, oh, our own gastric juices make it. Okay, cool. So it's it's it, everything seems pretty. Uh, it seems up and up in comparison to any of these other things that these guys are doing. I'm like, okay, well, I'll I'll dabble with this. I'll mess with this. I'm I've a, I've um I've, I've also read that it's supposed to be good for the gut, 
for gut healing. Yeah, yeah, mm. they yeah they talk about that in there. All, <sighs> he talks about this in this article right here too. So it's a it, Ben does a really good job in this article. So I, I highly recommend the way he the way he presents it. Like I think it even came on there with a calculator. Like I was able to use Ben's article to kind of figure to everything. Figure out what yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is so it expensive? Uh, no, it was given to me. Now you're doing this. But you're also doing a more anti-inflammatory protocols, right? You're not just doing that. I am. I'm also. I've also taken your advice and I've ramped up the uh, <laughs> the loading of turmeric right now. Mm. So that's going mm. on right now. You're doing um, what? Four twice a day. Loading eight? phase. Four capsules twice a day. Eight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah to eight total. So four in the morning, four in the evening. I'm doing right now. Um, I'm also back to my regular sauna sauna time, which ours is an infrared sauna. So I'm back to that on a very, very regular basis. So I know we talked about testing all this stuff and then adding one variable. Like I, I care too much about getting better than like just mm. to like care yeah. that much. Like I want to, I'm going to try a handful of things that I believe have helped me and are, are working, <clears throat> working towards me getting mm. my testosterone up. So for me, those are like kind of the main things that I'm doing right Wonder now. What, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm, you just got to connect look- to a, a stem cell doctor. That's the next move. Yeah. That'd so expensive. Awesome. I know. That's, yeah, that's the, what I mean. We got to have somebody that knows somebody. Isn't that like $10,000? Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Five yeah. to 10 grand. Yeah. Like, so I, I was talking to a couple of our buddies on that also. And that, that that's actually what led us to the BPC-157. It was like was, a good starter. Yeah, because they were like, oh, you should do the stem cell. And I said, yeah, well, I am just don't feel like throwing five or $10,000 at it, you know, like... Mm. And they're all, well, you should definitely try this. And that's where I started looking, looking into it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll fuck around with this mm-hmm. and see. Mm-hmm. And plus, you know, uh, a couple of our buddies that have done it have been like, that have had like a pec tear and had other. Said issues. it was amazing. Oh, yeah. They said it was just at, within 30 days, they would notice a huge difference. And so I, I feel good that I, I've done this now for, what am I on, month six or seven of rehabbing this? And still, I'm dealing with a lot of pain and it's still bothering the shit out of me. So I'm like, okay, let's see if I try this, if it mm. will speed up the recovery at all so what if the, it makes your calf bigger that would be amazing that'd be anger that would, <laughs> like, what the fuck man i would be so excited if that was a side effect <laughs> what if you grow another achilles <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it, just, it just creates a new one for you he jumps higher oh, wow oh my god no, what do you, you use an insulin needle yeah it's just an insulin needle. so it's tiny yeah, it's tiny. Yeah, because you could hurt. also do it. Doesn't uh, hurt at you all. You could also do it systemically, right? You could just do it subcutaneous and it just for the whole body. Well, so it is subcutaneous. So even if you are doing it down there, you still aren't injecting in it, like into the muscle or ligament. You just like, go, it's yeah. still in. The, uh, yeah, it's still the subcutaneous. Uh, so okay. uh, you can go intramuscular, but uh, you know they say that could be really painful. And since I'm not dealing with like a you know maybe if I was doing like a pec tear, maybe mm-hmm. that's probably what I would do something like that. Um, but that I'm also, you know what I've done too. And it was funny that when you brought it up, cause I was already kind of doing this when I started ramping up my, uh, training again was reintroducing the carbs. And I kind of came to my, I come to figure this out on my own for a while there. You know, I was such a, a, a carb guy and then we went ketogenic and I went the complete opposite. And then I kind of found somewhere in the middle of the row where I was eating like a hundred to 200 grams mm-hmm. of carbs. And, you know, lately yeah, and it's been nice. Like what I like about eating like a high fat, low carbohydrate type of diet, I notice that it, it curbs a lot of the cravings. I notice that uh, I can enjoy meals still because fat tastes good. Uh, it's not hard for me to keep myself from making bad choices, like and kind of maintain my physique where it's at. So I kind of like that, right? And sustainable energy levels. But the drawback of it is it really has been hard to gain and build and. You know, so I started reintroducing, you know, more carbohydrates and mainly just with white rice. I mean, that's the main thing that I've reintroduced that I wasn't eating a lot of. Same it, choice for me. Yeah, it's just e- it's easy for me. My body responds well to it, accepts it. I don't have any issues with it. It's just easy to cook it in the bulk. And then it, it, rice goes with almost everything mm-hmm. that I eat anyways. And so just recently been adding a few cups a day of rice into the diet and man, I just my workouts are feeling good again. I'm feeling back to I'm not I'm far from normal, but uh, you know, just yesterday and the day before, just good workouts. It's been a long time since I've walked away from a workout and been like, "Fuck yeah, mm. that was a good workout." Like I've been f- since this whole rehab process for me, a lot of it's been like just getting it done. Like I need to do this. Like I need to put this work in. And it's fucking not exciting. It's not fun. It's not, you know, it's not, I'm not seeing major progress anywhere, Mm -hmm. but I've been putting in the, like recently, and I attribute some of that to the reintroduction of the carbohydrates. I really feel like that. You look healthier. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. You definitely look healthier. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell that your, your body's 
in a better state now, like it wants to build or, and that's kind of what. Well, it, there's something else too. So, and I used to, those that have been listening for a very long time remember me kind of ranting about this, and I haven't brought it up in a long time since I haven't been hardcore on the diet like I was when I was competing. Kind of back into that space again, and you know, I tell you what, dude, like the protein shake thing. As much as we're not we're not big fans of supplements and getting all your all your nutrients through whole foods. I have a really hard time when I'm only eating a few times a day, getting 180 to 200 grams of protein. Right. It's just fucking hard. I mean, do the math on that. You know how many ounces of, of meat you have to consume to to hit those targets. So, you know, I've been I've been getting the the shakes in almost every day, every other day. You know, there's been a few days there where I've had a really good high protein day that I can get it all through. Whole Foods, but mm-hmm. well, it's convenient, especially if you're really busy, or again, just to get the get your protein numbers up. But you're not aiming for the obscene no like protein I just said, levels. Like I just said, 180 to 200. I mean, yeah. I'm a, I'm up to 215 pounds now, and I'm so 215. So 180 to 200 is not even a one to one ratio for me. So I'm that's but so that's hard to get though. One mm-hmm. if you only eat, and there's quite a few times there where I'm only eating two or three times in a day. Mm-hmm. So you're eating two to three times a day. Well, divide that over, you know, divide two hundred over that. What that is? I mean, you're talking about sixty five to seventy grams per 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 meal. You know, sixty. It's to a 70. decent amount. That's mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, and mo- if you eat out somewhere, they the typical meat serving is four to maybe eight ounces. Eight ounces of steak, you're looking at forty grams mm-hmm. of protein. So that's a big, nice steak too. I mean, yeah. so and even if you're eating double that, uh, I mean, uh, ordering a whole, you know, a pound of meat, you're still not even hitting the, close to those targets. So, yeah, I know the the back to well, you have to, you know, what I try to communicate to people because we talk so much about you know finding balance, you know, eating more intuitively, listening to your body, is that that is a very good baseline. To, to, to understand it's it's important to know that you're it's important to find a baseline that is healthy and balanced but also understand that when you're pushing your body to you know a higher level if you're trying to push your body to achieve a certain level of muscularity or definition or strength of performance that uh, that will require you to push certain things you know what I'm saying like if I want to get my body down to Six percent body fat. Well, my baseline, my healthy, balanced baseline is probably around nine or ten percent body fat. To get to six, I'm going to probably have to restrict, and I'm going to have to you know, deal with ignoring some of my body signals, which are telling me to eat. Same thing if I'm pushing my body past a certain limit to build. I think the problem for most people in that space, or, or you know, where, where they're, is they're, they're constantly trying to do that, and they, their baseline, they don't have a balanced baseline. It's like they're either trying to get shredded or they're way the fuck off the yeah. wagon. Mm-hmm. Or they're trying to they're, they're trying to build and all they ever do is try to build and they force feed themselves everything and they cause themselves issues. So, I mean, really that's what it's all about because performance, if you push yourself to a certain level of performance, it's going to require you do things that are that are not necessarily ideal for for balance. Right. And that may require you to eat more, push your food, push your restriction. Well, that's you know, that's the difference is that like right now I'm trying to kind of build. So, it's like if I was just trying to live a healthy, balanced lifestyle, it's not that big of a deal. Then so what if I, you know, miss my protein targets for a day or two? Yeah. It's, it's not the difference like, between uh, probably 140 and 200, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not it's not another a, 30, 60 grams, something. Yeah, like that. but I definitely feel it. You know, I definitely feel it, and I can already see it, see it on my body and everything like that. The difference, but again, this is me. Once I, my body tends to want to be this 200 to 210 pound physique or so you know anything north of that or south of that like you said you know requires like either major restriction or making sacrifice or you know going out of my way to add Mm -hmm. calories or nutrients same here same here what what shakes are you which one are you doing well it depends right so if i'm if i'm home like when i'm at my house i like to use my way like so i use i I use my way and i make my own like homemade shakes like Mm -hmm. i uh, i like to mess with all my own fruits and berries and i make this coffee smoothie that's really good so if i'm home i use that but when we're here which is i've been doing mostly here i've been using organifi's so I bounce back between the the vegan Organifi one and the and mm-hmm. the whey one. So and I seem I seem to be fine with the whey. I don't have any problems mm-hmm. with that. I enjoy it. But man, <laughs> the Organifi one I can just throw water in it, dude. It's that good. There's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of shakes that you can just especially throw. not plant based ones. No, no, especially so they. I mean, because I'm I've been using plant based because I can't have dairy. I've been using plant based proteins for ever, 
and they're all I develop. I mean, I, I have a super good t- high tolerance for shitty tasting protein powders because <laughs> I've been taking them since I was a kid. Uh, but I mean, hands down, plant proteins are t- typically disgusting. Organifies is by far the best one yeah, yeah. that I've ever tasted. Dude, you just you saying that reminds me of like some of the old shakes that I used I to know. take that were so. Remember Myoplex? Like plug your nose. And Remember Myoplex, dude? Yeah. The the packet powder you had to pour that whole packet in there, and then it would turn into this like cake batter. Oh, it was yeah. cake batter. Ba- it was. You, you turn on the mic, the, the blender, and it would just. <laughs> boom. Oh my yeah. god! It, it wouldn't was, even move. No, oh. you just there would be like a small spiral in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, it's not what, even mixing. What was it that was in there that made it that? Thick? I think they put a lot of concrete. Like mix. a gelatin like or something in there? Yeah, I think they put like compounds in there to make it thick, um, mm-hmm. to, I guess for the texture or whatever. But for guys like me who are trying to get, you know, a lot of these calories <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah. it was such a pain. Well, I'd have to add like like a, two gallons of water just to make it blend. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm like, go, go, trying to drink the whole thing. No, you We should try and make an uh, Organifi pudding. Uh, yeah, like that. The, you guys oh. are talking about the protein pudding. Oh, yeah. I never even knew that existed, but yeah, it, like a lot of those shakes felt like pudding. It was so fucking thick. Dude, the the, the worst one for me was, uh, God, uh, it was Twin Lab, and I want to say it was the Gainer, I think it was something Gainer 2000. Yeah, I, and used, it, to, I used to drink that it one. It was, it, one serving was 50 grams of protein, 150 grams of sugar. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> not, jo- not, not, not lying. 150? Yeah, I would get like 2,000 calories. It was 150 was grams of sugar. Mostly sugar, dextrose. Yeah. And I'd blend this thing, and then I'd wonder why I'd fall asleep 40 minutes later. Because my insulin expired. It just <laughs> crashed my insulin yeah. like crazy. Blood sugar. Dude, that's so my- many grams of sugar. Yeah. Uh-huh. I would teach most of my clients to first cut back to less than 50, and then eventually try and drop them below 25. For the whole day. Yes. No, this was yeah. a shake, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, this is a shake. That's You're so- on a mission to gain. Yep. yep. And by all means necessary. That's so, yep. so much. It's Speaking of our sponsors and stuff, if you guys... Do you guys follow my 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 sisters? Do you guys follow all no. my fa- my family members? Cassie, uh-huh. yeah. all of them, not just oh. Cassie. Uh-uh. So, my sister, my youngest one, Sarah, mm. she moved up north, up to Washington, and this little turd. Like I tell you what, like she, they don't. I mean, they don't pay any attention to what their brother's doing and shit like that. Don't listen to the show. Don't do this like that. And I see her post fucking butcher box up on on her page, <laughs> and I'm like, I message her like, hey, you know your brother's sponsored by that yeah, company, right? You can did, get like a discount. Yeah. <laughs> did you not? Did you not use the mind pump code? Like, oh right. no, I didn't know. I'm like, dude, I just want to strangle some of my close family. I had that same thing happen <laughs> the other weekend. Same thing again. Like a friend of ours that used used butcher box too, and they're close to me. I'm like, you guys are like family. Like it's so crazy to me how much mind pump has grown. And how many people that we're reaching, and to think that I still have fucking people that are like super close to me, yeah, that don't have any, I have no clue. Oh, I know. I, I introduced my friends because like um, we had we had a barbecue, and dude, that's that comes through in the clutch because I always have meat there, so we just threw on some burgers and everything, and all the free bacon. Like my kids eat bacon every single morning now. I'm like, gonna, my mission is to take full advantage. And see how far I can stretch you the know, free like bacon, the free bacon thing. <laughs> You're gonna break it by yourself. I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna yeah. break the bacon. <laughs> break the bacon. Yeah, it's gonna happen. We need to make a t-shirt. That's yeah. probably one of. I would say I'm trying to think of all the sponsors like that we use like the most. Like Butcher Box is. That's probably my number one. It's rapidly We're getting. Find number two. It's rapidly getting up there. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, obviously. Well, we you're want, gonna eat meat anyway. Well, that's how I feel, yeah. right. Right, and it and the the product is so good, and that would that type of meat would cost you so much to yeah. buy in the store. I had ribeye this morning. Did yeah. you? Yep, yeah, ribeye with uh, egg yolks, uh, some white rice, and uh, what else did I have? A little bit of broccoli. Yeah. That was my breakfast. I just like the way they it's set it clutch, up. clutch having it around. I like the way they set it up to where, because, you know, you don't know. Like, the one thing that I was weary about when we first started it, and I didn't know they did this, shame on me, right? Because I didn't probably read all the stuff when they sent it over to us. But I was like, you know, hon, I don't know if I want that sent to us every single month because I'm not sure, like, you know, we travel a lot or we, we, we go out to eat a lot. Like, I don't want to, like, be wasteful and just all of a sudden we're just piling up all this meat that we're not eating. Yeah. She's like, no, dummy, we can do every other month or every three months on mm-hmm. there. They, they give that option. So we started off, I think, at every three, and then we went to two, and I think we're up to now one. So it's funny that I said that, mm-hmm. and then we end up working our other. <laughs> you know, you know often great? By me. Yeah, too, because um, we, get, we get the um, fresh – vegetables and everything from a farm that's close by so i literally have like a box of like 
all these vegetables and now i have butcher box is like the meat provider and oh so that's it's, great it's just like it makes so much just i don't know why have they thought of like introducing <clears throat> or partnering with well like you a just vegetable? didn't you just see who who was it who showed me was it doug or you who showed oh, there's me? like some smoothie company oh right? there's like three it was oh. butcher box a smoothie company and then something else oh that looked organifying. like they were working together yeah. and was it organifying I think so yeah, I think, yeah so. I think they were all doing they were all collaborating yeah. and doing something together they did some sort of a giveaway the trifecta yeah. Did they meet because of us? Is that 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 uh, maybe pr- let's claim it. Can let's we take credit it. for that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might as well. Damn. Uh, yeah, we're creating Dude, the this... ultimate synergist. You guys have a good weekend? Ah, uh, no, man. It was oh, I What? What? I mean, what yes, like, and, no. yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just not a good weekend. I had, I had some rough <laughs> moments, but uh I for me <laughs> you guys will, will appreciate this. Well, I went to the circus one one day. That was fun with my kids. It was just something like fun to do. Like I, which I circus? didn't really want to go. There was no clowns or anything. It was like a. Is it even a circus if there's no clowns? Is it? I don't know. There was, was there was like a. Was it performers or animals? There's a p- performer, so it was kind of like Cirque du Soleil. So they had like um, trampolines. They had like acrobatics. Oh, right. and they had all this cool stuff, but like it started out really rough. Like they had like knife throwing and everything and they were like missing. And I swear to God, I thought somebody was going to get stabbed. Oh shit. Yeah. It was bad. And then that they finally got better. Yeah. They, I don't like watching that. It was, it was, it was I unnerving. Dude. I do not like watching that when they do that. It's just a tough thing for me to well, watch. Well, you have to be good and like confident and like none of them were like, it, like the knife wasn't even sticking on the board, you know, and I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, please guys, just stop, 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 stop. You know, like I wanted to get up there. Uh, I think they do that on purpose, though, don't they? They might. Yeah, I think they like act like they're like, oh shit, this is. They're like, they're not very. They're like, ah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, dude. They did. They look pretty sloppy, dude. But the rest of the show is amazing. Like they had like they saved all the the, the great acts towards the end and and all that, and that was fun. But it was kind of funny because Courtney got me a uh, um, for Father's Day got me this like massage, and so we went um, to to get a nice massage. We had a spa ahead of time and all that at this place, well within. Uh, in Santa Cruz, and I was like super stoked, you know. And I don't know if you guys now have ever like so we had a tandem massage, and I get in there, and there's a male, female, and I'm kind of like putting my stuff on there, and I'm in a robe and all that, and I'm like sitting over towards the the female side, and he's like, no, 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 you're with me, and I was like, so you got rubbed down by a guy? Yeah. <laughs> And now this is the first time for me, dude. I'm like, you know, I'm like, whatever. It is what it is, but like. I don't know what it is, but I just, I still, I'm like, Ugh. did you, you work on I did not, I did not did like you? it. That's because you feel something inside. Did yeah. you like so, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you? It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's so, so comfortable because I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uncomfortable no. inside because no, you're I like, didn't like any, am I any minute of it, dude. <laughs> did he miss Nana, out? And he spent a lot of time on my glutes. I was just going to say, did he rub a down lot. the cakes? Bro, he, okay, listen, he pulled my leg up like this. And then, like, bent my knee out. Oh, yeah, that's not a normal position. And so he's like this, and he's like rubbing the inside of my thigh and then down my leg. And then, I, like, oh, you that's know, extra so hold on. That, that's extra credit. Hold right on a second. There, bro. Hold on I was second. like, what are you doing? Uh, dude, hold on, Justin. Hold on yeah, a second. I live with a massage Adam, therapist yeah, right now. Adam Lowe's. Yes, his please tell massage, me. Is that normal? And I worked with him for a long time. That's actually an illegal position. You don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> massage. It's illegal. He made that shit up. I knew yeah, it. Yeah. I was telling Courtney, I was like, this guy's molesting me. I think that was bonus work right there. Oh, man. He made that up. That's not even a move. <laughs> he made that up to, you know, I was just, like so vulnerable, you know. Like my legs are all up in the air. He's like, he's like stretching me. I was like, what the, the fuck is and going you, on? All you have is a towel covering your covering your shit, right? Just I'm, a little, just a no, just a sheet. Were you naked underneath? Yeah, I was butt no, naked. No dude. underwear either. No, man, I don't. I don't do massages <laughs> that's with the underwear. Right, that's the right way to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I went straight from the 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 sauna and the tub to that. So he's so just I was like super relaxed. So you've got like a thin sheet between your junk and the world, and then he's got your leg. Open, right, and, and it's white, so you can totally thigh. see my my junk, everything. You he know? can see the red pubes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fire crotch. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you would be, yeah. but dang man, yeah, so you couldn't relax. Ass. No, I couldn't relax the whole thing. It was an hour and a half. She got me like the the longer one, and she had the girl, and she had the girl, <laughs> and it was funny because she was, was like, the girl attractive. No, she was okay. like no. Anyway, she's this say, older lady. I was gonna say because if you were look, like, let's say you're but getting massaged by the dude, yeah, and then you're looking at this attractive girl massage your wife, and you start to get aroused. But dude, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's were you, the wrong idea. Wait, were you guys in the in the room? Same together? room together. Yeah. Well, why didn't you just fucking request the girl? I said that she already started working on Courtney. Right? I was like, I, I was like back and forth, and I was like, is it just me being a dick? You know? No, like, not at and, all. And we, I was like, I was like, we hundred percent. That's a man. That's mandatory. When we go, like I I request that and Katrina knows that. So yeah, she, well, she just, 
she she like she requested two didn't know it was going to be men that's so weird to me though that they would that they would cuz it typically is that well, way well a lot of times women don't want men massaging them yeah a lot of times not always but but if, if women, anybody women tend to not care as much guys get a little more yeah weird about guys it. Right. actually well but both right because i know women that would well, say I, I don't want a man massaging me because they're very bro i wouldn't have cared if it was like you know that that gym teacher guy that's like really like you know pounding my legs or something like like punching you want to get rough yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i want to get rough but he had like really soft he was hands. like really delicate and and was, <laughs> was he handsome and it was like, say, was he's he like handsome? rubbing my face and it, no he wasn't no he, he wasn't do it for me he wasn't handsome he wasn't even a Oh, if he was, of, if he was handsome, a, it would have made it better. At not least. even a little bit attractive. <laughs> no, not Just at all. Just a little bit. No, How old is he? Okay, here's here's Did the he worst have a body part. on him. Here's the word. No, <laughs> no body. He's no. tiny. He had this little nose ring. Dude, oh, oh shit, bro. So he sounds was, kinky. Listen, yeah. listen. So he's rubbing my face, right? And so he's kind of leaning <laughs> over. With and his I, hands? I get I get a waft. I get a waft of like salami. I was like, bro, did you eat a salami <laughs> sandwich? This is Wait, killing it for salami. me right now. Yeah. So there's this. So I gotta tell you something, Justin. <laughs> okay. Tell there's me. This, this so, story isn't that no. Well, no. There's this. There's this. So there's this phenomena that happens where uh, if you're thinking about something, yeah, you can actually start to perceive senses. Uh, in relation to that so thing. So you're saying that Justin's thinking you about were thinking so, about thinking salami. salami, salami. salami. Oh, that's you know, why this guy was rolling. Oh, my God. Salami. <laughs> <laughs> so, he was, hey, you're so full of shit. Were your, and was, <laughs> did, were your eyes open or were your eyes closed when he was massaging your face? <laughs> Bro, I was eyes closed. I didn't want to look at him the entire time. Oh, I was, I was no, like almost was, trying to pretend and he wasn't girl. using his hands. I was going to say, you certain he's using his hands this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially like when he was like yeah, leaning <laughs> over my face. <laughs> he's like, I had a moment there where I was like, is that his fingers? Oh God! <laughs> yeah, no, dude. I oh, it was bad. Jessica and I got a massage in. Where were we? Were we in Thailand? I think we were in Thailand, and uh, that's right. I think it was Thailand. We got a massage, and <laughs> it was two women, and we're totally naked, but we have the sheet over us. Right, right. And the fucking women just come over and whoosh, pull our sheets off, and I was just chilling there naked <laughs> while they're, while they're rubbing us down, and I'm looking at my girl like, like here it is. This might be uh, <laughs> this yeah, might be interesting. It was a regular massage. Uh, <laughs> no, you all nothing else for happened. A yeah. Speaking of naked, sh- mm. my girl, dude, she makes me so angry sometimes. I Uh-oh. almost was late this morning. Why? You're having too much sex? Maybe. So, I mean, we do our workout in the this morning. This is what happens when you get your Everly Well test up this high, Justin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just so you know. Something to shoot for. Yeah, yeah. This is something yeah. to shoot yeah. for right here. Yeah. So yeah. I continue with this. No, I would just annoy my wife. excellent story. Yeah. Yeah. We're working out, and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done early. I'm going to go in the, in the house and get started with breakfast. I said, sure, no problem. <laughs> So I, and I'm late, right? I'm already looking at the clock. I'm like, I have 15 minutes to shower, dress, eat, and I'm out. I got to be out real quick. She's like, okay, I'll get breakfast started. So this little shit, like I walk in, she's got an apron on, she's naked, cooking fucking eggs. That's you know, awesome. That's rude. Wow. That's she awesome. knows what's wow. about to happen. Wow. Yeah, she that's, knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> she's a like, trap. She's yeah. like, oh, you're in- She knew what was that this happened. This is a trap. Yeah. Put your box bacon was coming out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, you're going to yeah. be late? Yeah. Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? We're making bacon she, this morning. Yeah, she totally yeah. took advantage. Dude, uh, one more thing that though, like he went in my armpits. Mm. What the fuck is that wrong hurts. with you? Why? Well, what do they call it? I almost the punched grip? him. That's a that's an erogenous zone between no, men. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I'm You're done. gonna make Justin so self conscious. He's never. Gonna I know. I'm fucking with the red. He's, 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 he's getting all pissed off. Hey, stuff. so I'm reading my I'm reading my hustle right the my daily hustle article this weekend. Hustle and for your muscle. They they talked about Milpitas the the um the mall right oh, and yeah. so it, it intrigued Why? me so the, great mall the great mall yeah, yeah it's great it's not as great it's as the, the setup in so quotes it's great the article was about so in the great mall there is a car right now or there was I don't know if it's still there or not but there was a car there and and you guys have seen this I know you have mm. chance to win a car mm-hmm. oh you yeah, can yeah fill yeah, out yeah, all yeah. the information and mm-hmm. stuff like that yeah. And so, I, I guess they decided to like dig deeper into this to get like find out like does, does people really win a yeah, car? Yeah, do people yeah. win the car? Yeah, is this is a big like gimmick. It totally is. Hustle. Of course it is. Those yeah. fuckers. Which is we kind of know that, right? We kind of knew it, but to hear it confirmed because someone actually like went nobody in. ever wins. So here, yeah. So here's the funny part. So you would think I always think that when I walk by those, I assume like okay, so I think I, I see like a, a Hyundai. <laughs> I'm I, I assume that it's like a it's a it's a car dealership, a Hyundai car dealership that's doing that. But no, yeah, it's not really. really they, they donated it, right? Right, or something. or something like that, or they bought it. Whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter. They have it. This company is a travel company. 
And so they and like if you read the like so you first fill out all these leads. So it's really just a way to capture leads so they can fucking Cock hammer suckers. you. That's yeah. Dirty. Then they make you come to this travel thing and you got to sit there for two and a half hours. Oh you my get God. hammered like crazy. Then if you win like there, closed. then you win an opportunity to possibly win <laughs> an actual free trip, which puts you in this other drawing. Right? It sounds a, like purgatory. Oh, it's it's insane. It, you know it, what it reminds me of? Did you guys ever hear about that radio station? Like it was like fifteen years ago. Where they had to put their hand on the car. No, no, oh. they did this. They did this. That uh, one was famous. Yeah, they did right. this contest, and if you answer the question right or something like that, enter to win a a brand new Toyota. And so people were fucking going crazy, and it generated all this response. And this woman won, and she showed up to the radio station, and they gave her her toy Yoda. It was a it was a Yoda no, doll. Yeah, it was a Yoda doll. Dicks. Oh. Yeah, <clears throat> and she sued them. Wow. And she won. They had to buy her a car, a Toyota. Oh. She won. She won. Wow. That's like a million doll hairs. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. Do you know what happens to a lot of these people? So what happens? And they don't. And this is is this is very very common. And the ones that actually give away cars, like in Vegas, they have it all the time, right? Where you can win like a Tesla or whatever like that. Yeah. It's a ninety to a hundred thousand dollar vehicle. Mm -hmm. What, but when you get that, you got to pay taxes. You have to pay the tax on it on the full car. So and it's and because it's a a prize that you want, it's not like of course Uncle Sam is going to get what, what so the like taxes. So dude. on like a hundred thousand dollar car, you got to pay like twenty six to thirty thousand yeah, dollars. You might not taxes. be able to afford your get your free <laughs> yeah, prize. Yeah, many people that win didn't don't have thirty grand just <laughs> laying around to throw at taxes to get this car. So many of them have to sell it and to then pay the tax and keep the to balance. pay the tax and then yeah and then a lot of times they walk away with ten or well, twenty. Well, think about it right now. If you won, if you won like a what's the most expensive yeah, car in the world, racket. like the Bugatti was like one point five yeah, million or one million. Of, yeah, yeah. So like most yeah. people, if they won that car, they'd be fucked. Yeah, they'd have to sell it because they wouldn't be able to afford the you yeah, know hundred thousand. Even not There's even no that. Way. Just I think most people would be fucked if you won a hundred thousand dollar car. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. most people, or not a lot of people, at least in the U.S. or have that much money in their savings account. Most people live God paycheck damn. to paycheck. Yeah. So Together you like a couple hundred. Yeah, yeah. right. You win some that's a hundred thousand dollars. Not a lot of people have thirty something grand. You just reminded me of some shady shit I did a while ago. Oh, God damn it. Oh. What did you do? Yeah. Oh talk about it. So this was a this was early in my career at Twenty Four Fitness back when, you know, we used to push the limit. <laughs> we, were a bit. Bad, we were bad humans. <laughs> yeah, when we were bad humans. My <laughs> apologies. Evil in us. Yeah. So my one of my sales guys, uh Sundi. Do you know Sundi? Did you mm -hmm. ever meet him? Mm -hmm. All right. Good guy. He was a killer. Still friends of mine. He had this like cutlass, I think it was a cutlass, kind of old school, but he decked it all out, so it was all like gangster looking. And he had, uh, God, what are those rims called? The ones with Dayton's. all the sp Dayton's. Yep. He had Dayton's on his fucking cutlass, and with the little tires and everything, it was all shiny and brand new. Straight out of gangster boys, looking. Straight out of boys yeah. in the hood. Wait, wait, are this, is that like the wire that's yeah. like all gold or yes, or chrome? yes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We parked that car with balloons and shit on it, and we had people fill it, fill <laughs> out entry car. forms to win his car. Oh, you did? Yeah, we oh, did, you bro. Dirty dog, you did. We the, did. You did the hustle. And we just got a bunch wow. of like, a bunch of leads that we you know. That's what these. That's what, they, that's what them. all these things do, man. They just just to capture the. But leads. what's funny is we used his car. You know what I mean? Win this free Cutlass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember. You floor. remember back. And then you see it parked again. Yeah. There. <laughs> you remember back then. He won it. This yeah. guy won it. That was yeah. a big deal. Was lead boxes. I mean, lead boxes were. That's a, how you got a lot of your leads. I did yeah. that. Yeah, I yeah. did that a lot, especially for boot camps and stuff. I was planting those all over. San did you? Jose. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't feel I like tried, any, I didn't get shit from it. But. You guys yeah, ever? Call, you're you're doing that right when it was starting to come back the other direction. Like, yeah. no, there was a heyday in the late '90s. Those yeah. those things I could turn yeah. into some money. Yeah. After that, they everybody really... told me they were great, and I didn't ever see any fucking great no. leads out. I made a few, you know, two, like, two it was methods. Towards that... the end. I remember because you this you did that after you were for twenty four. I yeah. remember watching that die at twenty four. Yeah. So I remember uh, yeah, yeah. it was still like when I first came. I'm on, telling you, late nineties, early two thousands. That was yeah. It. No, you're right. It's exactly when it was late nineties, mm -hmm. early two thousands. It was still cracking. In mid two thousands, it was already starting because uh, yeah, you go the park web. them somewhere, you get like two leads, and they were like some kid, you know, yeah. riding on the fucking thing. Or someone that put like eat my dick, or that's whatever. Uh, that's yeah, pretty. Yeah, yeah, no, you didn't get anything. People no. started to realize they don't give any free memberships. Yeah. I'll just yeah. get a free pass. Yeah. For just, a week. Yeah, no. But in reality, I'm gonna go. The one that actually works was uh, Chipotle. When you put your business card in, I used to put like twenty in, and I would win every time, dude. It was awesome. Oh, you would free win free burrito. <laughs> I think they just wanted you to come in. I was like, yes, free burrito, free burrito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The things that he remembers. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's great. No, <laughs> note to self. Did you guys ever call out of the fucking white pages? Oh the my phone god! Book? Did you guys ever do cold calls out of that? Like that? Oh, not dude. like that. I didn't. Oh man, I I I used to do. At one point, I was I forgot what it was. I think me and my my manager. This is early on. This is before I became a general manager. My manager, who was 
good friend of mine, but also a dick. We would compete a lot. And so he would, at some point, he would challenge me and say, well, let's see how well you can do just making appointments out of thin air. So I'd made like 100 phone calls a day out of the white pages. And I got real creative to get people in the door. But that was a... That was a that was a fucking wonderful experience. <laughs> just calling random people. Oh, yeah. that's You know awful. what I mean? That's hey, awful. Hey, you know. And yeah. you'd say something like, is Mark there? And they'd be like, uh, no, oh. Mark's not here. Oh, well, maybe you can help me out. You know, this whole bullshit. Oh, oh my God. God. It's so dude. cheesy. Oh, yeah. So that's cheesy. That's gross, dude. It's so <laughs> gross. Yeah, that's really gross. <laughs> you know, it might be gross, but I, it trained you, though. That's so. it. Yeah, I learned. It's proven yeah. gross. You yeah. learn how to fucking get no's. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And be okay with getting yeah, yeah. people to say no. No, 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 for sure. Yeah. Dude, I got some bad news for you guys, actually. I don't know if I want to down now you're not gonna like this Ugh. so they just did some studies i'm gonna read this let me see where the studies were done this was published in the journal of scientific reports and there was a team of french and german researchers that reported that nanoparticles found in some tattoo inks can migrate away from the skin and accumulate in the lymph nodes oh yeah no. not, not and then what does that do well means i got if they stick, if they cause up lymph nodes, they, 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 if they, <laughs> what's that mean? They, now? Inflammation in the lymph nodes. I mean, that could, that may lead to potential increases in other in types of cancers. What? Yeah, oh. that's oh. right. I but know. I think I it's the, cancer. I think the ones that move the most are the colors. What about your low back one? Is that, is that yeah. any worse? That one's, that that, you can't even see it anymore. It all, it's all in my lymph nodes. <laughs> Where <laughs> the good. unicorn tail trips down your crack. Like, yeah. That, was, that's going to be a problem. It was the unicorn that was swimming with the dolphin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one's gone now. Yeah. No, but that shit that shit can migrate, and I think it's the colors that are the ones that that do it the most. So, mm. yeah. So you guys have both. Do you well, have colors you on yours? Crap me out. I have a little bit of color in my back one on my neck. It's got a little bit of green, but that's it. All, I got a, all I got black a, and gray. I got a little bit, but not the a lot. Bit. Not a lot. Eh, whatever. It's too late. Yeah. No <laughs> more colors then. I all, think all it, black and gray. you. I think we talked about this before. I think we're gonna see. Uh, you know. No tattoo thing become popular. Oh yeah, there's yeah. everywhere it's, now. I, well, it happened because you, these kids pushed it to the limits, dude. Where when I see once, these, once emo kids starting that's to do it, it, it fucked it up. That's for it. All it. I'm sorry. It, when I see fucking, a lot. When I say plain when I, white tees. When I see yeah. straight up dorks like major massive insecure dorks yeah. having full sleeves. Yeah. When you're scre- when you're singing about screaming infidelity yeah. and you get like full tats all over your neck, dude. I'm not believing you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know it's getting crazy in 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 the hip hop world because uh, who's that that rapper that died that I told you guys about X something triple X something yeah 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 like the thing now with these guys is they get every their whole face now yeah everything yeah, yeah. because there's nothing oh, left good, to, yeah. there's no skin left yeah. so now it's just they're gonna do their eyelids and, and that, their freaking and the eyeballs their lips yeah they like die their I, yeah. I, I told you guys that eyes. I've been reading the iGen book right it's so good remember when we talked about the cry closet. Yeah, and we kind of triggered some people. Our forum kind of went off about it. You're right. Yeah. I didn't realize. So this book actually talks about the statistics on what college students think right now about that, and three out of four are actually pro it. Wow. Those. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's like how they deal with stress. Yeah, yeah. there wow. might be some. They may need a little bullying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I think. No, Maybe a little bit. There's got to be up. this conditioning. You know, I really, that leads I, up to I really want, I really want one, if not both of you, to to go through that book because it, the yeah. whole thing. You're gonna, I promise, you'll love it because the whole thing is literally just statistics. It's all studies. It's mm. all studies that they've done, and then presenting the information. Is that, it, are you listening to it or are you reading it? Um, well, both. Uh, yeah, it's, I is the always, audio is it super complicated? Because I may want to listen to it with my son. Yeah, because no, I feel like it I'm might be good information. No, actually, I Jordan think Peterson's so. I okay, right so I highly recommend this to anyone that has a kid that that is your. your I think it'd be great for them just okay. to become aware of some of the things because there's a there's pros to it too. There's a lot of things, and I mean Katrina and I a lot of times we'll, if we're listening together, we'll pause and talk about it. And I'm like, you know, we knock a lot of times about <clears throat> all this phone time, right? Like us always consuming so much phone, so much, you know, uh, digital information, not being social. And so it's obvious that they're they're losing some of their social skills, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, there is something to be said about, it, you know, is that our natural progression of evolution? Because we have this ability to, to learn and grow at a faster rate that we've never had before. Mm-hmm. And the more that they're consuming at that, the, the, the more knowledge that they can potentially consume. Now, the other side of that is you could also be doing things that are just killing brain cells mm-hmm. and you're and you're not adding any value to your life and you're not growing and learning. But the argument is that, I mean, at least I know too, and personally, the amount of information that I've been able to consume and learn with our smartphones. Well, yeah, well, that there's a good point. Like I actually have been experimenting with this app. It's called Duolingo. And uh, it, it 
helps you, it like gamifies the process of learning another language. And my kids fucking love it. And they don't want to play like regular video games. They don't want to watch TV. They want to just learn like a new language. Oh, they, they get a lot of like, they get a lot out of it. Wait, wait, wait. how does this work? So it, it basically, it, 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 it's just like a video game. You get points, all that kind of stuff. And like, it takes you through like German or, um, you know, whatever, like Korean, whatever you want to learn. And it, 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 it rewards you every time like you get past like certain stages and then you put sentences together and like uh, you understand how to use verbs and like all that kind of stuff. So it, it makes it like super fucking simple. Like I, I can't even believe how simple it was. And you do like retain it. It's crazy. It reminds me of, and I've said this how before. Brilliant. It's very yeah. efficient. It's very effective, I should say. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of, and I've said this before, how technology. Can you send this to Taylor? This is the type of stuff. I know. I was well, going to talk well, to Taylor. Well, Taylor and I have that. been talking a lot about yeah. like one of the things that with the the way we're doing things with sponsors now. Like I don't want to just do stuff that's related just specifically to our which we already have shown that, right? We're doing things with companies like Mir and Viore and Everly, like a lot of other companies, right? Yeah. Like like I was just telling him about the tech space. I'm like, you know, we're all into this shit. Like, why wouldn't we find a company that we can get mm -hmm, behind mm -hmm. and do some advertising with? So this is something that I'm going to have my kids use this. This yeah. is dope. Dude. No, but what I was going to say Didn't is even know that it, existed. it reminds me I of, know. you know, uh, our, how we we progress so quickly with being able to provide ourselves with food that lasts a long, a long time on shelves with long, you know, shelf lives. And, you know, we solve the problem of starvation, but we introduce new problems of, you know, with obesity and health. I think technology is going to do the same no, thing. I, agree I think with it's you. Mm -hmm. it's going to provide us with in incredible benefits, but then we're going to also have to tackle it with well, think about that. The potential Every, negatives. everything that we've yeah. we've created, right? The the more uh, powerful it is, you know, the the, the more responsibility it right. requires. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the yeah, more yeah. the more dangerous it can become, and then the further it can take us, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's this is no different. we and so that's why I think this book is a great read because it's like. It's not a. I it's felt not like, alarmist in one direction. Right. Like I felt irresistible when I read that. It was kind of more like scare you, like holy shit, like this yeah. is something to be worried yeah, about. Yeah, it worked. Right. Where we the, all were kind of. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're kind of. It puts the the author kind of puts their two cents in, like while they're while they're giving all this information. Where this one is like purely like all the numbers and facts. It's like mm -hmm. take it for what you what you want with it. But here here are some statistics and facts and the things that have been happening over the last thirty years. Yeah. <clears throat> and the author originally wrote, I think, uh, Generation Me. Uh, which was based on Generation X, which is she's a she's a PhD. She's from Generation X. So this is her like third book on this. So she's been following all this stuff for a really long time. And I think I share with you guys that, you know, reading all these studies, I'm like, oh my God, these are these are the questions that I get asked on the the thing that's been following me around for 15, 20 years or whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna reach back out to them because they've been reach they've been trying to get a hold of me for the last like month and a half and I totally have just ignored mm -hmm. them because I'm like, I don't have time to sit down and do this right now. But I feel compelled now that I'm listening to this and I want to know if it's possible if I can get like my old past stuff. It'd be really interesting to watch oh, yeah, be cool. my own because they ask like the same stuff. Like, and I mean, and there's definitely things that I remember saying no to that I've now said yes to that I've experienced or tried or whatever. So, and it's very, very personal questions hmm. and you're seeing some really fascinating stuff happen with the generation right now with the introduction of this. And one that stood out to me that I thought was really fascinating. We talk about how, Kids are getting their driver's license later. Kids are staying at uh, staying in homes much longer, like living with their parents till adolescence know. is stretching out. Yes, more and, more. and so the, and this so the way the book presents it's kind of cool. Now a lot of a lot of people kids are having less sex, by the way. <clears throat> that yeah. too, less yeah. drugs, yeah. less yeah. drinking. Mm -hmm. All those rates are going down. Mm -hmm. Drinking and driving is going down. Drugs, drug it's use less by, taboo. I mean, if you think of it. Well, what's kind of and it's kind of neat to see now and and the book the way it presents it is like there's plus and minus to that, right? There's like there's there's some really positive things that are happening because of that because now parents are actually parenting longer and they're waiting till the kids are fully mature and they mm -hmm. learn more. And they and the kids are, the kids can now read studies and understand stuff like that better. So you're seeing them, kind of naturally, uh, or, or evolve at a maybe a slower rate. But then by the time they get out into the real world, they're a little more educated about things. So there's some positive things there. But then the negative side of that is they're so sheltered so much and they're they're so protected over things. Then they get into college or something like mm -hmm. that, and then they face a little bit of adversity. Hence where these like cry closets this and reminds that me are starting of, to come out is because they yeah. feel they need this protected safe space that their parents have been providing for 20 years yeah. and there hasn't been a lot of risk and danger and shit like that or exactly. being offended. Helicopter term, right? It's right. It reminds me of when I was a kid, I was 11 or 12, I went to Sicily to visit family and I was hanging out with my cousins who were all my age, like 12 <laughs> years old. 
but they were super mature compared to me, like very mature, like with adult conversations and a couple of them smoke cigarettes and, and it's because they were poor. And so they were, they just forced to grow up a lot faster. And you can sometimes see the contrast of that with kids when they grow up a little harder. It's like they mature much faster than kids who take a little longer. But of course, then the flip side of that is, you know, they get into, they might get into shit that they shouldn't, or they may develop other issues. And it's like, that's, that's what it reminds me of is kids are being parented much longer. They're protected much longer, maybe less chances of doing all these other, you know, potential dangerous things, Way less. but also, you know, they don't have very thick skin or they yeah. don't have the ability yeah. to handle themselves That's the downside. as well. Right. It's, I mean, they talk about confrontation, like they, you know, they've measured like how many kids have, can say they've gotten in a fight in the last year or like that, like that number has significantly dropped. Mm. How many of them have been to a high school party? Like that number's like fallen off. Like, so there's a lot of things that are really good that are happening because these kids are are taking longer technically to grow up, but then there's also the drawback. So mm-hmm. the, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. I think it's a great read for anybody who has kids that are growing up in this iPhone generation. So if you've had a kid in the last 10 years, I highly recommend that you mm-hmm. read it, and I highly recommend that you have your kids. I think it's a great read. That's what I'm going to do with my son. Yeah, yeah. for the, kid, the kids to listen to it, because just to make them aware of that. Like, yep. I think a kid understanding like who they are growing up in this world, totally. and what it was like maybe before that, and some of the pros of before that, because they only see what's in front of them. They only see all the positive stuff. Yeah. There's yeah. No, the educa- education's always been effective for me, at least when, I, when I'm teaching my kids. If I educate them honestly, mm-hmm. not like trying to scare them on one way or the other, then uh, I've noticed at least that they make better decisions rather than the whole like, don't do that because it's bad. Like, okay, let's talk about why people do these decisions, make these decisions and why people do these things. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the negatives and the positives. And let's just be honest about it. Yeah. So so check. So I got one more thing I want to share with you guys. Another article that I thought was absolutely fascinating. Um, They did a study on, this was an animal study, but they gave these animals safe doses of, of chemicals that, that we're, we are normally exposed to. Now, what we need to understand, and the reason why they did this was, you know, it, let's say glyphosates, for example, they'll test a certain amount of glyphosates and they'll say, oh, this much glyphosate over this period of time seems to be safe or mm-hmm. this much red dye number 40 or whatever seems to be fine over this period of time and, you know, stuff like that. Mm. And there's a couple problems with that. One is the, the period of time that you can test is typically short. And the other thing is it's never in the presence of other chemicals, See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So by itself, it may not cause problems, but when you but combine it to yeah. all the other chemicals that you're exposed to, mm. which are also in their own quote unquote safe doses, but com- in com- combination may cause problems. And that's exactly what these researchers found oh, because wow. none of us live in a vacuum. You're like if you're going to have, if you're going to eat non-organic foods, you're not just exposed to one particular chemical, you're exposed to a bunch of other ones. And although they all meet safe, you know, the guidelines that say you can only have this much, right. you just, it's the combination of these things. Right, and right. then you combine that over a long period of time. And that's exactly what they found. Wow. What they found was when they, when they combine for six months, they combine these mice or they expose these mice to real life mixtures of 13 chemicals that were below the, the, the guidelines. So lower than even what was considered the, you know, safe oh, amount. Wow, interesting. They found that uh, a, a majority of them had um, toxic uh, exposure to their livers. Their livers and kidneys started showing problems. Weight gain uh, was was being shown in some of these animals. So it's an interesting study, but it does bring up a, a good conversation. Mm-hmm. In that it's you know it's not just one thing. Like it's not just the artificial see, sweetener. I've, I've it's never not just the- I've never thought that in the first place. I've, mm-hmm. When I look back of like the stuff that or where all this might have happened for me, like where you know psoriasis and other things <clears throat> started to express itself in my body. Like I didn't pinpoint it to like oh that must have been the protein shakes I had. Yeah. It's like, no, it's probably because I had three protein shakes, two bars, a speed stack, maybe didn't get enough sunlight, three or four. Yeah, no didn't get, yeah like yeah. it's like the combination. But you could really easily fall into that. It wasn't like I was going out of my way to try and poison my body. It's like it it's was- It's a combination of things. Oh, yeah. you, yeah. you throw in the your the you know your deodorant, your hairspray, your right. makeup. Your, that's where it all starts to make sense. Yep. It's like, you know, if you separate it and that's the only thing you're focused on, it's probably not that big a difference, but in combination with mm-hmm. all these other Well, exposures. it's like when someone argues or debates with me about, artificial sweeteners they'll say all oh, these studies show the artificial sweeteners this that and the other by themselves first off i still think that there's there's long-term potential problems but you're also consuming other foods and other things and exposed to other chemicals and toxins that in combination over a period of decades 
probably going to have some problems, right? Because what what study do you – I can't find one study. I can't think of one study except for the one I just talked about where they're coming out with a new preservative, right? They only test that one preservative. Again, remember, science is, does a great job of looking at one parameter very deep, but they do a poor job of looking at the whole picture. How many of them are like, okay – not only are we going to give you this, but we're going to combine it with all these other things that you're likely to be exposed to and then see what happens. None of them do that. They, right take, they take animals in cages and they give them just that one thing with their food and water to see what happens. Right. So it's the combination. We'd be, and that's why, you know, that's why I tell people like eat organic, you know, try to use uh, you know, uh, products on your skin that don't have you know, lots of chemicals and do what you can uh, rather than trying to eliminate one thing just kind of generally try to do it because it's that long-term that's, combination. I think exposure. that's great advice. And I think that's the way that I, I try and explain to people too is to not like I don't think any of us are dogmatic about it. I don't think and I don't I don't think it's a healthy lifestyle either to live that way too because I, I have friends and people I know that are like this too where it's like oh they won't touch any of this stuff and it's like listen too like it's tough to avoid all of it. But if you're aware of it and know that it's not ideal for you, like you can make these subtle little changes in your mm-hmm. lifestyle where it's just like, oh, you know what? Today I'm going to opt not to have that because I know that I've already consumed X amount in the last few days. Yeah, of- if it's a reoccurring theme, like right. you, you see this pattern that, that keeps existing, like it, that's something that you can just eliminate that for a while, maybe come back to it. You know, just you just have to be mindful that, you know, these things are, are you know, creating a pattern in, in your lifestyle. Mm. And I think just by doing that, I think that makes it can make a huge difference in somebody's life because I think where we see the scary stuff or the shit that comes out is when people abuse it yeah. and it's very easy to abuse these things and Dude, especially if you're in the fitness industry right. where you're probably consuming two or three daily supplements that are sweetened and colored with chemicals and things that you know over time com- combined with all the other stuff yeah might actually cause problems or at the very least place your body in a state of suboptimal health which will just make it more likely for you to get something, you know, some other health problem. Right. Just because your body's in the suboptimal state of health. Right. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I. Com and use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from the Village Crazy Lady. Currently doing MAPS performance and getting pain in one of my shoulders with an overhead press. My shoulders slouch forward, so I think that might be the reason. What are some correctional exercises to address this? I'm almost 100% sure that's what exactly what it's from. Yep, yeah. 100%. That's, this, is why, this is why I think everybody who runs a MAPS program should also have MAPS Prime Pro. Or excuse me, MAPS Prime. Because the Prime comes with the assessment, so you can kind of... I mean, obviously this person knows that they have the rounded forward shoulder. They just don't mm-hmm. know how to fix it. Right. And then from there, so you would, in other words, you wouldn't pass zone one, right? So right. it's pass or fail. If you had Prime, you would do the, the zone test. You'd find out you didn't pass the test. And then with that, directs you with the compass on what movements that you should be doing, not only before you work out, but as much as you possibly can to start to correct some of these bad patterns that are causing yeah this. that's why the setup so important i mean and that's why we want people to to identify these things before we start loading the joint so you know like to, to be able to go through the wall test and and figure that out yourself it's a powerful thing and that's why we put that out there so uh, when you go to to do an overhead press and your shoulder isn't tracking properly like it's impingements you know certain pains are, are going to be inevitable and that's something that you know stop what you're doing like we got we have to address this like don't just keep kind of muscling your way through it which i know tends to be like the tendency for uh, a lot of people here's the bottom line if you have a really bad recruitment pattern and you continue to work out it might not you might not even have pain for a long time but what you what you're doing over a long period of time is you're actually building armor and strength in that poor pattern. You're actually strengthening it to the point where it's just going to become more and more difficult to correct. To correct. Mm-hmm. And then here's the bad part. Let's say you've got you let's say you've got this bad recruitment pattern. You've you've luckily, let's say you've just got for whatever reason, you've been lucky, you're working out heavy, hard, you you compensate and you figured out a way to compensate so you don't necessarily hurt 
and you build a lot of strength on this recruitment pattern, on this bad recruitment pattern. You build a lot of armor on this bad recruitment p- pattern. When you do finally hurt yourself, it becomes a major injury mm-hmm. because then it's like, boom, I tore something or boom, you know, I fucking, you know, really All ruined my joint. and stress it comes uh, to a point. That's right. And I've seen this personally. I've seen this happen. I've had friends who were, you know, who bodybuilded. This is extremely common. Very mm-hmm. common. Yeah. I've had I've had friends who were who, who, who worked out like bodybuilders, extremely muscular. Like if you looked at them, you'd think, oh, these guys definitely, you know, like they're impressive looking. And they would get a severe injury or a major injury from the most mundane bullshit. Like I had a friend who tore his rotator cuff throwing a frisbee yeah. at the park. And it's because he had such pa- bad recruitment patterns and they were so strong in these bad recruitment patterns that when he finally went to, and that's like, he wasn't throwing the, it wasn't was like he was trying to- The straw that broke the camel's back, yeah, as it, say. He yeah. wasn't trying to throw it like uh, as far as he possibly could. He was literally just, he just tossed it real quick. But because he's got such a bad pattern and he's so strong within it, he whipped that Frisbee, boom, tore his rotator cuff. I have another friend who, like, same thing, big muscular guy, uh, but poor function, poor mobility. He was moving, picked up a box, turned and twisted to put it somewhere else and slipped a disc. Yeah. yeah. Major back injury. So you, you, you want to make sure you have good recruitment patterns that you don't have these, these imbalances because it's a recipe for disaster in the future. The other side of it is this. And I, I know I'm pretty sure Adam can pick this out, and you too, Justin, but especially Adam because you were in the bodybuilding community. I can look at somebody and tell you, even if they're muscular and ripped, their symmetry is off or their aesthetics are off mm-hmm. because they have- Where they're developing the most. They've just got poor recruitment patterns. They yeah. don't look- It's almost like- and It's funny because the layman might not be able to pick it out. Like I could see and tell like, oh, that guy yeah. definitely needs to do this or that girl needs to do this. The lay person would just look at them and say they don't look as good. Something right. doesn't look right. Well, you could see that even even in that situation, I could still see how they're moving and and where they're you know dominant versus where they're not as as comfortable moving. Mm-hmm. You know whether it's in the shoulder or wherever we're looking. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing this <laughs> I picked this question because this lady is, is persistent. Like it's, it's asked the <laughs> same question. Like I want to say like almost like five weeks in a row, and wanted me to like sing my way through it, and I was like, she I don't you- know how to do that. Like, girl, you gotta. <laughs> Go through some shoulder priming. <laughs> yes, that's it, man. I, I don't really know where to go with that. Well, if that's you don't, it. if yeah. you if you don't have prime, you you got to get prime. If uh, if for some reason, here's some moves though that I will give you that will help out. Like if you if you do some band pull aparts, shoulder dislocates, and then a seated row with some emphasis on the retraction and the depression of the shoulder. So. I typically, anytime I do a chest press or an overhead press at all, uh, these movements are staple movements. Now, as you get good at these things, you can use tools like Justin likes to use a lot, like the Indian clubs and the mace, which I think are great ways to keep up shoulder health. But a lot of people are in such a rounded position that that's a dangerous move. Yeah, I want to say something. Yeah, so that's when you're in a position to strengthen good recruitment patterns, you've established good recruitment patterns. Mm-hmm. Now we want to reinforce those. So now I'm adding uh, res- more resistance and load into that mm-hmm. um, situation. So yeah, I love those tools for that, but uh, definitely do your due diligence first and uh, get the proper recruitment established and go through our prime. We did it. We did a video on this on our YouTube channel called how to fix rounded shoulders gone in four steps. So you can watch that one, and I give you in that video. I give you some some good exercises and tips. Here's something you really want to pay attention to, and I know the guys have covered it a little bit, but I want to reiterate: you form is crucial when you're correcting a muscle imbalance or a recruitment pattern. Crucial because the second you focus on resistance, how much weight you're doing. Let me put it this way, okay? If you're trying to move in a way that your body doesn't like to naturally move because it's not your default pattern, the second you add the second you put a, enough weight for it to be challenging, your body's gonna, going to revert to its what it does to the status quo. It's going to revert to what it does best, which is that old pattern. So when you're doing these movements, you don't think about building muscle. Just think about moving perfectly and push the weight enough so that you can feel challenged, but not so much that you move out of that position. Mm-hmm. Because the second you add too much weight when you're like you're when you're working out and trying to build muscle your form is going to revert back to your old way and then you're going to end up strengthening the old pattern rather than correcting the new one. So what I tell my clients is super lightweight and the the focus is perfect 
technique. Literal, perfect, slow technique. Don't worry about anything else. Just perfect the form, and that's what's going to give you the results you're looking for with these better recruitment patterns. Then as, as you get stronger in that new position, slowly add resistance over time. And if it's a really bad situation, if your shoulder, your forward shoulder's terrible, you're going to have to back off on your weight on all your exercises because otherwise you've got competing signals. Like if I do this correctional exercise to try and correct this issue, but then I go back to these heavy other movements where my shoulders go back to where they were before, Mm -hmm. that signal may actually win. So you may have to back off for a little while and just, you know, do do all your old exercises, but with so, with well, so a, much lighter a, weight. A, you- a simple way to coach that or to tell somebody, I think, is when you're when you're pushing, lighten your load. So all your pushing movements, lighten your load, really, really put a lot of emphasis on mechanics. And then you can probably get away with more of your pulling type movements. You can get away with a little bit heavier load because yeah. of what you, because of that. Yeah, just check yourself when you're doing any kind of ro- like rows. Obviously, this is going to be prescriptive towards this issue to be able to work on the retraction part of it. But you have to be able to understand how to retract first before we row, so then we don't reinforce these bad patterns yeah, as well. Good so. point. Next question is from Gabriel Joseph D. What are your thoughts on youth weight training? When is too young? Is there any truth to stunting growth? Oh, I'm so, glad you picked it. Who picked this? I did. I yeah. did. I want to tell a story yeah. about this. So this weekend- Is it a good story or is it It's lame? a good story. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not lame. So uh, I was at the Stanford uh, Shopping Center or whatever. Was that up in Palo Alto? That you, you, When were you there? This uh, weekend? Yesterday. Really? Yeah. What time? Yeah, we were there. I, I think I told you, didn't I? No, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, we were I was there. At, I was at Stanford University from uh, eight a.m. to about ten thirty eleven. No, not the university. The, the shopping. Set, the the yeah, but then I went to, mall. Yeah, then I went downtown. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. then we went downtown. Palo yeah, we were there from maybe like ten or eleven till oh, about we must four. Have just missed oh, each no, other. I was there too. Stupid. Were you really? no, I wasn't. Yeah. You weren't no, there. Yeah. Anyway, we were there. We were there shopping. Jealous. Weird. I was at the Gap. Jealous. Or or pre- Jealous. pretending yeah. to shop yeah. because uh, things are so damn expensive. Cucumbers on my eyes. It's funny. We walk into the store and Jessica's like, "Oh my god, I like this," and you look at the price tag. Never mind it's like 300 bucks <laughs> like who the fuck's gonna spend 300 dollars on a skirt anyway so we're there and i like to people watch one of my favorite things to do and so i'm watching all these people moving around walking around it was a sunny day so the place was crowded and there were a lot of kids it was a sunday so you see a lot of teenagers hanging around and i, I could not i could not find a single teenager that didn't have some kind of major Oh yeah, muscle imbalance, and yeah. I'm not talking about like a small muscle imbalance. I mean major. There was a young girl, hmm. maybe 13 years old, in line at the Starbucks because we were getting some espresso, and she had such a bad rounded shoulder and kyphosis. It was so bad that she almost looked like she had a hunchback. Wow! And she's like 13 years old. This is what I'm. Most, it was terrible. This is what scary. I'm most interested in to see what happens in the next 10 years because yeah. I think it's too. It's way we're way too early right now in the iPhone generation to really see what the long term effects are on this. That ha- just hasn't been around long enough. Yeah. If you if you were if, if you're a kid like you're explaining right now, they're just getting warmed up, dude. They're just getting warmed up with those patterns. If yeah, high school- we didn't have a lot of kids with bad posture issues when we were growing up. I mean, that wasn't really a huge. We did, but not like this. Not like, like this. exaggerated. Yeah, yeah it's oh, accelerated this is scary, at a very, bro. very, yeah, very, very fast rate. Th- these are the that kinds of. Scary. So uh, as a as a as a trainer, somebody who's worked in fitness as long as I have, I can identify imbalances by watching people move. Uh, many times about how they stand, and sometimes, many times, these are imbalances that I'll see that the average person may not notice. Like if I pull the average person and say, hey, do you, can you can you see any problems with that person's posture? Well, they might look at them and say, no, they look normal. I'll be like, actually, no, there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about dysfunction that's so bad that mm-hmm. the average person would even point it out. Yeah. And that was all the kids I saw, yeah. all of them. I saw people walking, kids walking around with such flat feet that were so turned out, it was terrible. Hmm. People's tennis shoes being worn on the sides. I saw forward shoulder, forward neck. I, it was just, it was terrible. I'm like, and they're young. These kids are going to have major problems as they get older. As well, that I, to continue. I told you guys yeah. that, you know, and not to just to hammer these poor young kids, but I mean, this, this little Achilles tear that I had really probably, I would say in the last seven years, knocked me off my training game more than anything ever has like it's just i've not been this inconsistent with lifting especially like really consistently and and training hard as i have in the last six seven months and during that time 
work has stayed the same. Like we were, we're answering it, if not more, it's accelerated, right? The amount of time that I'm on my phone and my computer has accelerated in the last six, seven months. I can feel and see a very vivid vis- visual difference in my posture, especially my neck, mm. you know, and it's, and it's caused problems as I've gone back to lifting. And I'm, I'm just, so I, I was doing the zone one test yesterday, like working on that in between exercises. And that is fucking so hard for me, dude, right now. Yeah. It is so hard for me. And I think, man, I'm aware of this and I'm putting the work in right now. And I exercise that just goes to show you how, how much time that we're spending doing things like that. And I don't think that I'm crazy. I don't, I don't think that I'm like, excessively sitting on my phone i manage that and i like we talk about all the ways that we put it down and how we use it like today i I, again this was on my mind all weekend so i told katrina i said well one of the things that i have to do now is i have to schedule a time to do the dm thing otherwise it just gets out of control gets away from me and then i spend all day long constantly going back and checking and responding to people so now i've got back this morning it's monday i'm back on my routine it's like i got here about an hour and a half before you guys and I just literally just nailed it all out in one sitting. So now I'll just avoid it. Like, it's okay. I'm done. I'm not going to sit in that posture mm, yeah. and fucking do that all day. I'm going to train today. I'll do yeah. all my corrective work. Like, so I, if I, I know that this is happening to me, being somebody who's aware of this, imagine the, the yeah. teenage yeah, you boy. You have to be or, intentional about it. You yeah. have to really pay attention to it. Like, that's that's crazy. This now. is going to yeah. be, a, I'm telling you right I, now, this is going to be a big fucking deal in the next well, 10 years. This is a why, big fucking and deal. And this is why, and I've already made this prediction, and I'm going to add to it. So I've already predicted that in the future, the most advised or the most recommended form of exercise for the aging population is going to be resistance training, just because it, com- it directly combats all the things that happen as you age, from hormones to your bones to mobility, loss of strength. It's 100% customizable, like bar none, the best form of exercise in the modern context for older people. I'm going to add to that and say that resistance training will also be one of the number one recommended forms of non-sport exercise for youth far more than it is today. In fact, it's never recommended today for the youth. Right. Now, I, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I think it'll be recommended is it's the only form of exercise I know of that you can use to directly combat all of these imbalances. Because you take a kid with all those imbalances, you have them play a bunch of sports, they're just going to learn how to move well with those imbalances. Resistance training, I can look at a kid and say, we need to correct this, and we have specific mm. exercises that will help correct these issues. And I think it's I think it's going to be something that we're going to see more of now. Is so I guess the answer is it's great for children. It needs to be appropriate for children. That's the that's well, the big let's, one. Let's address the part where he talks about because this was something that I didn't know when and when I was first getting into training in my early twenties. I had heard rumors uh, and doctors were still telling uh, clients this that oh you know your your kid's too young to lift weights he's mm-hmm. only. 12 or 13 years old, wait till after puberty. And it used to be, you, you, you think the, they'll stunt their growth? Yeah, the rumor was that it would stunt their growth that they lifted weights before that. So a lot of parents were scared to let their kids weight train before that. That is absolutely not true. Totally false. That is completely false and not true. Mm-hmm. The thing that I, the only thing that I'm weary about when kids weight train at a very young age is their proprioception just isn't there. They just there. have bad yeah. control. Yeah, they just, their they're balance and stability. And so they're, they're very wobbly and shaky when they do, when they do training. And so you just got to be extra careful. With. Well, that's yeah. I was going to put a caveat out there because of that fact alone, because it, it really depends on you know whether you trust your coach or personal trainer to slow everything down, and the, the the workouts look completely different than you would think. You know, as far as I'm trying to progress and then keep you know adding load and doing this like periodization type of a program with kid, I I find a lot more value in the mechanics and slowing down and, and understanding where to feel and mm. feel their way through. And 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 just control, like control uh, isometrics and things like that. You know, using load or not load, so unloaded, so that way they get uh, more connected to their body and their functions and their joints, like before now overloading. So the, there, there's a little bit of a caveat there for me as far as overloading kids young. You're going to have a lot of problems. Uh, coming, you know, into their developmental stage. Well, there's no reason a kid should be maxing out or doing anything under five to ten reps. You know, what I'm they saying? don't have yeah. the control. Yeah, it just doesn't no. doesn't make sense I, to I, be pushing them that way. I think like a maps the workouts anywhere, just look different. Is all. 
a maps anywhere where you're doing a lot of body weight stuff sure. and a lot of tension like you were talking about i mean close chain close yeah. chain movements close for chain. the real young yeah, for the real young body weight movements are are best because they have to practice but the that's not that's not to say that you couldn't get to weight training you there. could because i've seen some kids that are really young that are, are exceptions to the rule that, mm-hmm. like or maybe their parents enrolled them in gymnastics since they gymnastics were is excellent. since they were toddlers and then now that they're 12 13 years old they've got incredible control and balance that kid can fucking weight yeah, train it all man. depends exactly if yeah. you have that established and that's their foundation they have a really good understanding of their body of course you know that you want to enhance that process Look, with weights here's the deal i've seen six-year-olds that can skateboard uh, excellent excellent balance i've seen six-year-olds that can do yeah. things physically that and very very well because they practiced mm-hmm. and the, and weight training is no uh, is no exception if you have your kid and i'm not saying a six-year-old should lift weights although they may be able to do some type of resistance stuff like with body weight but my point is it's got to be appropriate real slow have them practice if you take a nine-year-old who's interested in working out with weights and you do 15-minute workouts with them and you have the practice, by the time they're 10 and 11, they're going to have pretty good control yeah. with resistance. You know, their, their bodies adapt just like anyone else. As far as the stunting growth is concerned, that was a concern because when bones aren't done growing, there's a, at the end of it, there's a growth plate. And if you damage that, then the bone will stop growing longer. But in order to damage that, you have to use a lot of fucking weight. And kids just aren't strong enough to... You know, you put 300 pounds on the back of a 12 year old. Yeah, don't be, then that don't might be, happen. Don't be doing singles and We're doubles. We're not trying to PR. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, I've been lifting weights since I was 14 years old consistently. Didn't affect my height. I got taller you got afterwards. Ugly, you got ugly because of it. Yeah, though. it made wow. me ugly. That's wow. about it. It's the only thing that stunted my. <laughs> Too bad. My Can't fix yeah. that. Can't yeah. fix that. that face. No, but I, I really do think that in the future, you're going to see prescriptions for resistance training and i don't know how they're going to apply it it might be applied in schools because you're going to start seeing more of these physical pain problems Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. i mean we know about diabetes and kids we know about obesity and all that stuff but you're seeing explosions in shoulder neck pain back pain knee pain in inactive kids like they're not they didn't hurt themselves they're just hanging around and they have back pain and i and resistance training is the the best form Uh, of exercise a lot of posterior movements need to happen Mm -hmm. for these kids man to counter this Next question is from Sarah Lynn Four. How do you balance intuitive eating when on a bulk? I only eat when I'm hungry and stop when I'm satisfied. If I need to eat more, do I have to sacrifice that to build more muscle? I think you do. In, I think intuitive eating is contradicts bulking. I don't think mm-hmm. the idea of intuitive eating is to be eating for health, right, and balance and longevity. Bulking is pushing yourself outside of that. Yeah, so you're optimizing I, now. Yeah. So I think that you got to kind of let go of that. I would never try and intuitively eat if I was following like a, you know, especially if I'm aggressively trying to bulk. Like I'm setting a goal. I'm going to add ten pounds. Like at one point, I'm got to be tracking. I've got to be tracking. Uh, ex- unless you're somebody who's been doing this for a very, very long time. I mean, Sal is probably the only person I know that that manipulates his body up and down. Uh, as much as he does without any sort of tracking, and that, of course, that's you know he's got sixty years of experience of of, <laughs> of tracking his old food. wise yeah. you know, so, experience. So of course, like tortoise. so of course he can, he can he can do that. But I think everybody like else, owl. you know, I, I that was the one thing that I was really hesitant about when we did the intuitive eating guide. Is like, you know, I I know I know how long it's taken me to get to that place. And this is my profession, and my and I have a love and passion for learning and and uh, about myself, my body, and nutrition and exercise. And to get to a place of intuitive eating, I think I still think that I'm not a hundred percent there, as much as I want to believe that I am. So I my my real fear when we put the intuitive eating guide out was like a lot of people I thought would use that as like an excuse to not pay attention to what they're eating and be like, oh, you know, Mind Pump says you shouldn't track. Well, one of the could, first steps in there is like a track. I have an ice cream. That's one right, of the first right, steps. Right, right, right. Yeah. I feel like my body's telling <laughs> me this. is yeah. talking to me. Yeah. No, it's one like, of the first steps in there is to track. I mean, here's the deal with, here's the problem. The problem with, uh, the problem with most people is that they don't have a good, healthy, balanced baseline. They don't. Yeah. It's yeah. either they're, they're dieting all the time or right. they're bulking all the time. Right, right. And when they go off of that, they just go off and don't pay attention anymore. Mm-hmm. The reality with with intuitive eating from a from a fitness or, or performance standpoint, I'm talking about from a standpoint of I want to build lots of muscle or I want to get super shredded, is that it gives you a wonderful, healthy baseline. And it's nice to, and you want to be in that baseline most of the time. I mean, you there's no way you're gonna to want to walk around at six percent 
your entire life, body fat. It's not, it's not going to be good for you and your body eventually will fight you and rebel. And it's not good to walk around at this super pushing your body weight all the time, bulking stage all the time. You just can't do that. You want to be in this balanced, intuitive state most of the time. And then you can come out of that and push your body to either gain more muscle or lose more body fat. And if you, especially if you're a competitor, because I tell you what, com- the, most of the competitors I know have two shapes that they're in. Stage presentation sh- shape and off-season out-of-shape fat shape. Right. It, there's, no, there's no balance. It's like, when do you look normal? You're either shredded and depleted and you're about to die from malnutrition or you're, <laughs> yeah. you're eating so damn much, you're inflamed and bloated and you're causing gut health issues. And those are your two states of being. There is no, there is no balance. There is no, 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 no baseline mm. that is healthy and that feels good and feels natural where you're learning how to listen to your body. That's what it's all about. So is intuitive eating the best way, like being pure towards intuitive eating, the best way to be like the, the, the top athlete or to be- No, of course not. The strongest, buffedest, or to be m- most shredded? No. But will learning how to eat intuitively make- bulking and cutting far more effective absolutely yeah one because you're starting from a good baseline and two because you know your body signals because here's the problem with bulking the problem with bulking especially if you're if you were a guy like me who was insecure about being skinny was i didn't i ignored all my body signals when i bulked right i didn't even i ignored all the ones i shouldn't have the only signal you were watching was the scale just that's it just like that's it so it's like get on the scale at night before i went to bed it was work first thing trying to shovel it yeah and i would literally be weighing myself and going like okay i knew what i needed to get my weight up to that day in order for me to be a pound heavier the next day and so that's exactly and that's it was just all i paid attention that's to. right and so you i i there were there were signals that i needed to listen that's to how not when to i was trying way. to bulk like gut issues nausea my body's not gaining on all these calories maybe i should cut back a little bit and let my body and resensitize my body to calories like i didn't pay attention to any of that cuz i had no idea of how to listen to my body at all and the same thing for cutting i see people do this all the time especially women when they're cutting there are signals that they're like there are certain signals that you have to be aware of and ignore a little bit when you're trying to get shredded like you're going to be really, really hungry at some point, especially when you're getting shredded. Your body may get a little extra cold because your metabolism is trying to adapt because you're taking in less calories. Like Those signals, okay, ignore them for a little bit, understand what's happening, you're trying to get super shredded. But there's other signals you shouldn't ignore, like you know malnutrition signals, uh, losing my hair signals, uh, my period stop signals, um, my hormones are off type signals, my skin's fucked up signals. Like these are all signals that you shouldn't ignore, and if you don't understand how to intuitively eat, you're just pushing. Mm. All you're doing is pushing the cut or pushing the bulk, and then the bulk and the cut actually become less effective. So the irony is learning how to eat intuitively will make your bulk more effective and efficient and will make your cut more efficient and effective. I just think there's phases to this. I think you have to go to a point where you've been tracking enough times on the bulk and the cut to to have an idea of what intuitive eating should look like. And even an example of how I still catch myself, you know, so we talked earlier on the on the this episode of, you know, how I've been using the Organifi shakes and again, you know, I, I found myself just, you know, if I'm intuitive eating, to me, intuitive eating is like, you know, when I when it's time for me to eat, I eat something, I eat something that's balanced. I'm aware that I'm I'm targeting my proteins and fats kind of first and then my vegetables and then the carbohydrate carbohydrates are last, right? That's kind of like how I intuitively eat and I pay attention to you eat till you feel good. Yeah, I eat till I, I feel good, not till I'm stuffed and like pushing more food and then I just kind of do that. Well, what happens is you know, the intuitive eating like that for me isn't enough protein for myself to keep growing and pushing if that's what I'm trying to do. So I have to kind of track and be uh, aware of that. So I think depending on what your goal is and how many times that you've bulked or cut and how many times you've tracked while doing that, asking yourself to try and intuitively do that right out the gates or right now or fighting it. Like why why force yourself not to track? Like I, I, don't, I don't think... I think sometimes we, because we talk so pro about intuitive eating that we almost demonize tracking like it's a bad thing. Like, no, it's not a bad thing. I think it's very, it's totally fine. If you're serious about your bulk, if you're serious about your cut, there's nothing wrong in my opinion with you tracking and paying attention to that. Now, do I think you should become obsessive with that? And do I think that you can't, you know, if you can't be in shape without you tracking, I don't think that's a good place to be either. But in fact, it looks like they're almost 
trying to be obsessive about intuitive eating. Yes. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, like y- why why try intuitive eating so bad that you're like struggling to to bulk? Like it's like, well then fucking track. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not it's not bad to fucking track. It's just what's bad is to like Sal was saying earlier, is to be this person who is either completely on or completely off. Either you're tracking, you're following, you're dialed, or you're fuck it all off and you don't do anything. Like, no, that's not healthy either in fact part of the the part of that problem is people stopping their tracking just because they they've they've accomplished their goal you should probably track after you receive your hit your goal and pay attention to like oh wow i hit my goal of leaning all the way out and i'm still kind of tracking my food like i can get out of control really fast if i'm not Mm -hmm. paying attention Mm -hmm. that's part of the problem you know Mm -hmm. Next question is from Mark Kalhoff. What is the meaning of life? Oh my God! <laughs> who, who picked this? Who, who, I, thought, I thought I'd pick an easy question. Oh for my! God. Well, you know we've gone through eight hundred episodes. I guess Jeez. we should know the answer to yeah. this. Right? I'm going to go last on yeah. this one because I definitely am just. I'm going to find a way to argue with you yeah. on this one because this, oh. there is no right answer yeah. to this. I don't. This could go anyway. This is like the age old. This is like the question, right? The question that philosophers and spiritual leaders and religions have tried to tried to answer. I mean, I, I think this is a personal one. For me personally, the meaning of life is for me is to learn and grow as much as possible. That's about it. Like learn and grow and find meaning in the tragedy of life, in the difficulties of life. Because it's not hard. You don't necessarily need to find meaning in the stuff that's awesome. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not like Oh shit! I you know uh, I won the lottery or wow this great thing happened to me. What does this mean? It's like no, this is cool. I'm just gonna enjoy this great thing. It's when bad shit happens to you that you need to sit down and say, okay, what am I getting from this? What is the meaning the behind hardest this? Because thing, if you don't, it'll kill the you. The hardest thing to pay to to, to realize what you on that point is that if if life didn't have these crazy struggles and these hard times you wouldn't enjoy it. You wouldn't enjoy the good times. Mm-hmm. If it was all good times, all positive, that's why I loved when you shared the, um, you know, whatchamacallit, the Twilight, Twi- Zone, the Twilight episode. Zone episode because I, th- I think that's such a powerful visual for people to see. Like, man, that's it's so true. Yeah, that- we would reject it just like the Matrix, you know, like this utopian idea. It's just, it's it's not real. There's like, we just, we find purpose in a lot of the, you know, the hardships mm-hmm. and, um, these are these are really the lessons that we don't we don't necessarily we're not comfortable going through that process. But man, does it it, it shapes you and it it it, it presents like uh, it helps you to, to define your character. And I think that um, as far as life is concerned, it. So I was just watching. Did you guys watch the end of Westworld by yeah, chance? I did. Okay, I, I don't watch it. But I don't want to like re- you know reveal the whole the ending of it. But it's it's such an interesting thought that um you know when we're talking about free will versus you know determinism or or you know is is everything predetermined yeah. you know or do like i a- do i really have free will and so these these are things i think about a lot just because i don't know i <laughs> deep deeply thinking about like subjects like this like, what is the meaning to life and all this kind of stuff um but does it really matter does it really matter if things are predetermined like you're the one that's perceiving it you're the one that's making these experiences happen like real time whether or not you know, this is this is like an algorithm that I'm sort of falling into or not. Um, I'm finding meaning every day in something that's teaching me something. And so I just uh, for me, it's it's about being flexible to um, to sort of receive whether it's a hardship or whether it's an awesome experience, wh- whatever it is, like every day I'm, I'm willing to receive something. Yeah, I think something that blew me away a long time ago was learning the difference between fulfillment and happiness. Because so many people say you should find find happiness. Like that's the goal. Be happy. Be happy. And I used to think that too. Like, oh, I just want to be happy. And then someone explained to me the difference between happiness and being fulfilled. And they said, look, first of all, you can't be happy if you don't know what sad is like. If you can't be, you know, you can't have ecstasis if you don't know what misery is like. They, you have to have those dualities. Mm-hmm. And you can't, so constantly chasing ecstasis, constantly chasing happiness You'll, the, 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 the act of chasing is where you're going to be missing out. It's fulfillment. It's the meaning. It's finding that you're fulfilled in life and understanding that all those things make up, uh, you know, what life is all about. And you can see this, look, you can see this in celebrities. Some of these celebrities, they have everything. They have everything you think that would make you happy. They have money. They have access to all the drugs that they want to take, alcohol. They get special treatment. 
They're surrounded by people that think they're so awesome. They get all the attractive people wanting to sleep with them and whatever. They're basically, they have all of the worldly desires that average people aim for thinking that's what's going to give them fulfillment. And sure, those things definitely can lead to that state of ecstasis or happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, you're on drugs or banging chicks, you're doing, you know, crazy things, you make all this money, everybody's saying you're so awesome and it feels so great, but then eventually you realize like there's no there's no meaning here yeah. and it feels empty and that is a scary place to be and that is I mean, look at look at the drug abuse and suicide rate amongst some of these celebrities. It's well, scary. Don't you think too a lot of it is because like a lot of those relationships lose value because it becomes predictable. Mhm. Mm you know, like, you know what, what somebody is going to automatically, they're going to kiss your ass or, you know, they're going to give you something or everything you do is just like, it, it has this predictable quality to it where, you know, I, I find a lot more meaning in every day is uncertain. No, I think when, I think when people realize that the meaning is in the struggle, that's when they start to find like maybe peace, maybe that's the right word, peace and fulfillment. Like when you start to find that the like let's let's take life and let's just pretend life is is working out. Okay, we're a fitness podcast, right? So, so when you realize that the that the the meaning of your workout is the actual workout itself and not the goal, that's when you find peace and fulfillment and consistency with your workouts right, right. forever, <clears throat> forever. Like when I no longer really sure you have goals and all that stuff, but when I, that's not the purpose of my workout. The real purpose of my workout now, and it has been for a while now, is the workout. This is actually the workout the itself. Process of it. It's I'm enjoying the struggle. I'm enjoying the training. I'm enjoying the working on different things. I'm enjoying the learning and the growth from it. Mm -hmm. And so I know I'll never stop. Mm -hmm. It's not a question for me. Hey, Sal, you ever going to stop working out? Well, no, I enjoy the process of it. Yeah. Well, what about if you get fat? What about if you get sick? What about if you... Well, I don't care. And that's what happens. Yeah, I don't care. I'm still going to do it because of the, because I found the enjoyment in the struggle of, of it. The, the meaning is in the struggle. And I think life is like that too. And once we start to realize that a little bit, you'll still feel yeah. terrible when bad shit happens. You'll still feel pain and challenge, but it's not going to feel like it's for but nothing. There's also nothing wrong with good times. Yeah, of course. You know, so that, I mean, that's the thing. Fuck I can, yeah, You know, bro. I can experience Fuck yeah. happiness and ecstasis. Me? You know, of course. I'm my, okay. my, my theory is if you, if you live life fast enough, you might get a chance to do it twice. Like that's how I feel. I, <laughs> I feel. I, I feel so, like you read that somewhere. That's like a, like, it's like a cocaine been, and Lambo. Yeah, you're like, like that like sounds a, cool. I'm gonna I've been do that. Saying image. That. Like, I've been right saying that for a long time. It's like Charlie Sheen right there. <laughs> it probably was. I think it yeah. was Charlie Sheen's interview yeah. in Playboy a long time ago. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. What a great role model. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really think that where this can get you into trouble, I think, is I think some people ponder this so much that they end up getting paralysis by analysis. They end up. Yeah thinking about it so deeply and not living yeah not living and and that's what i mean by you know i i live by this theory that i'm going to live my life so fast i might get a chance to do it twice now that doesn't mean i don't stop to smell the roses it doesn't mean that i don't appreciate the process it doesn't mean that i can't see the silver lining and all the failures like 100 percent. but i most certainly am not going to slow down and allow myself to worry about what others other people think my life should be or what life should be all about like i'm all about the experience both good and bad mm -hmm. and finding everything that i can in each one of those experiences now what i have mm -hmm. found as i've gotten older is many of the great things that happen are the are the struggles many of the the best things in my life right. are the things that followed the hardest times the times that where i was at my darkest the times that i was the most frustrated what would follow that were some of the best times. Mm -hmm. So I think if you live this life, like I like where I have this attitude of, I'm going to live it fast. I'm going to get hit. I'm going to have some hard times, but I'm going to break through those. I'm going to find the silver lining in those things. I'm going to move forward and progress, and I'm going to grow and keep on trucking and keep on moving. Man, that's how I look at it. I'm only on this earth for so many years, right? Yeah. And I want to experience as much good and bad of it as I possibly can. And I'm not going to sit back and dwell on all these things that a lot of people are afraid of, man. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of anything like that. So you want to know what's funny is, yeah. um, I love, you know, I love, I love being a parent because it'll challenge you. It challenges me more than almost anything else. And it's funny when they do studies on having kids, they'll do a study and find that when people have children, they're actually happy 
less of the time than when they didn't have kids. It's true. There's more. Ang- <laughs> keep on selling me. Confirmation. Over. <laughs> keep on no, no, selling no, no. me over no, here. No, no, no. I'm gonna let me. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> They'll find that they're more anxious. There's more, you know, bouts uh, of you know fear and all that stuff. Yeah. So they're less happy. However, the same people when polled. On whether or not not they find that their life has meaning, much higher. Yeah. Now here's much the thing. Higher. Now, but here's my, yeah. But Boom. is that is that because before that they a lot of people struggle with finding a purpose because they have a hard time with it. It's an obvious. It's oh, I'm ob- not saying it has to happen. I'm just well, I'm just showing that because to it's me, like having kids, like of course, I think it gives obvious purpose. I think a lot of purpose. I think a lot of people get to that point in their lives where they're like. I feel like I need kids. I feel like I'm I'm X amount of years old. I've experienced a lot in life. I'm happy. I'm still kind of lost for what my purpose is or what life means. And then you have a kid and all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, this is what life was all about. Okay, maybe for you, maybe, you know, maybe you needed that. Maybe you needed a child to live a life of purpose. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging anybody that does, but per- for me, I don't need that. Yeah. I, I don't need another being that I need to live a, a a full life for or to have purpose and meaning in my life. I think there's I think it could be very healthy for you to find that within yourself. And then if you add kids to there. But I think yeah, a study think- like that, I hear that and I go like, dude, you know how many of those people I know who they were. They didn't have that purpose. Now they have a child. And it's like, oh, here's there's my purpose. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a, it's essential. Like you need to have it for. But just I was pointing out the the dichotomy, the the mm-hmm. fact that less happy but also more fulfilled that is interesting and that's my my point with that wasn't to say adam you should have a kid or you know you shouldn't or other people should or shouldn't right my point was that with with that was to to show how clear it is that the meaning of life isn't happiness all the time the meaning of life is to be fulfillment to be fulfilled and to find peace in your life and or at least that's much more of a that's a better place to be than to constantly chase happiness. The very act of chasing, by the way, is not yeah. is not happiness either. It always you know revolves I mean? to being present. You know, what I mean, most things that I've found, it's like the more I can be a part of this Dude, thing, it's, the better it is. One hundred percent, it's experience, right? And do you have that ability when when shit goes bad? Do you have the ability to actually embrace that, right, and experience it for mm-hmm. all that it's worth? Mm-hmm. Like that's crazy. Like most people. A little bit of rough patches come, or struggle happens, or hardship. They want to throw in the cards. Yeah, you want to you want to throw in the towel. You want to run away. You want to fold. Like you you don't want to deal anything with it. Instead of maybe being like, okay, can I look in deeper into this and find all the lessons that are in this for myself? Man, that's where like that's where the biggest growth happens when you have these situations. A lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to look at it. You don't want to look at the problems because right. you feel like if you look at them, they're real. But the reality is when you don't look at them, they get fucking massive. Yeah, the reality is that that's, yep. that's where the, the best stuff really lies mm-hmm. because in, the, in our success and our wins and the good times, it's almost impossible to look deeper into them because mm-hmm. you're, you're too excited. You're celebrating. You're, you're moving on or you don't even pay attention that much to it. It's like, oh, that was awesome moving along. Mm-hmm. But- Man, it's the ones that fucking knock us on our ass mm-hmm. where all the where, where all the message is yeah. at, you know? I read this book years ago, one of my favorite books ever. It, it was uh, different for me because I typically like to read books that are that contain statistics and facts and all that stuff. And this book was a little different. It was called Many Lives, Many Masters. I don't know if I've ever told you guys yeah. about this book. Oh, you've mentioned it's that. one of my sister's favorite that, books. Yeah. So it, it's about this psycholo- psychiatrist who's, you know, he, he treats patients and he recorded all the sessions. So all these things are recorded. So according to him, it's it's a, this is a true story, but- he works with this woman who has all these psychological issues and he thinks that she may be suffering from multiple personality disorder or maybe she's got some you know, repressed memories. And so she, he puts her under hypnosis to try and pull those out. And that can be an effective tool many times to get people to talk about things that they may be afraid to talk about. And so he does this and she starts to talk about all these past lives that she's lived where, you know, she was this girl who was poor and did that, this, that, and the other. And then, and so she's talking about this and he doesn't, at first he doesn't, he doesn't believe that that's actually what's happened. He thinks this is some kind of a psychiatric, uh, you know, situation. But then she starts to say things to him that were, that were about him, that she couldn't have possibly known. And she also starts to say things about her past lives that he went and checked in historical records and found that it actually you know, corresponded with what she was saying. So he started listening more deeply and found it to be just fascinating. And that book really resonated with me because what what that book says, and I'm, I'm not saying it's it's true or not, it just resonated, is that, you know, we we live these lives 
over and over again to learn and grow. And a lot of these lessons that we don't learn, we just end up repeating them. And many times we travel with other people, other spirits in different forms. Like, you know, sometimes in this, the reason why it resonated with me is there's times where I've met people or I've met them and within five minutes, I'm like, you know what? I feel like I've known you forever. Like, I feel like we're just right away. And, you know, what this book says is you may have traveled with people. Like, let's say you and I, Adam, right now, we're, we're friends and we have a, we're, we're co-hosts on a podcast. But maybe in a previous life, I was your dad and you were my son. Or in a previous life, you, we were cousins <laughs> and I was- you, Of course or, you picked that analogy. Yeah, something like that, right? You know, or maybe you were my wife. You know, Good these boy. are all- <laughs> <laughs> But we, we would travel in these uh, in these lives. Or and, I was your father. Or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. But in these lives- you, I you, was grandpa. And what this book said is before they would travel, they would say like, okay, I'm going to travel with you to the next life to help teach you this lesson. And that lesson may be like dealing with death. Like maybe you had a friend that died all of a sudden, but we don't know as you guys made that deal before you came. Into Anyways, fascinating book. I found a lot of, it did give me a lot of meaning to some of my stuff in life. Not necessarily because I believed it, but I just thought it was an an awesome story. So highly recommend that book. Just don't get stuck on, I think, pondering this for too long, right? It's fun. I think that's the thing. If you stick, you get stuck on that, then you forget to experience life, man. Don't forget to get out there and go get some bumps and bruises. There you go. Hey, look, there's uh, four days left for our big Maps Anywhere promotion. We actually talked about that program. Oh, you guys better get on that shit. It's half off. We took the total price and we cut it in half, 50% off. Uh, four days left at mindpumpmedia.com. We also have uh, bundles on the site. Bundles are where we take multiple math programs, put them together, and discount them like 30% off. For example, our super bundle is a year of exercise programming. So if you enroll in the super bundle, you can follow the programs one after another for an entire year. The results are phenomenal. Um, All those programs, including the 50% off maps anywhere, mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.